probably six months at this no it's not six months i said i would do that at the end of last semester which was like may but i've lived such a life that it feels much longer okay let's get into it so the first thing is at first i was gonna like tell y'all show y'all my stuff i'm not gonna do that okay i am very shy when it comes to writing um i don't like people reading my writing even when i was in school i hated it i did it because i had to I would hate it when people would grab my stuff and just start reading like I just don't like it I don't know it's one of my things I'm not a fan so I'm not gonna show you my exact things but this is just like a list of tips um, in general and you know what I've learned from my Berkeley application process and then also just like talking to people in the program not about the application but just learning their backgrounds and you know how they got into the program why they decided on berkeley blah blah, blah. all right here we go oh this video is about berkeley ms berkeley master's in data science program okay um if you if you didn't know it'll be in the title but i don't know seo y'all know the vibes all right so the first one is that all the requirements to get into the berkeley are online um make sure you follow those right uh if you don't <laughs> all the requirements okay here's another thing Be before i do all the life life updates at the end i'm not really going to be editing my videos anymore because it takes so much time and i looked at my goals and i have wanted to upload every week and it's been like once a month at this point so i gotta cut some corners somewhere and editing is gonna be it all right so here we go again the first one is that the requirements are online make sure you follow all of those requirements that you see like following instructions is you know baseline number one thing you should be able to do so just make sure you look at those okay and then i also say this because people will message me asking me questions about how to get into berkeley babes if you can't read the website maybe berkeley isn't for you okay so the second thing is that you need to talk to those program recruiters i also get a lot of questions being like well i do this and that and this is my background what do you think I, I don't I don't know I have a computer science degree I am a software engineer I've worked as a software engineer for five years when I applied to Berkeley I was at like three and a half so like I have the background that they are definitely looking for so I wasn't worried about that but people who come from non-traditional or maybe you've done some self-study and stuff I don't know maybe stuff looks a little different the program recruiters they might not be called recruiters but that's what I'm calling them um, so what you do is you go to the website you fill out a form and then they contact you um, and y'all just have chats and they check in with you to see if you're applying and how your application process is going and all of that. I will say when I applied, they told me if I applied by a certain date that they would waive my application fee. So that pushed me to submit my application earlier. Um, so make sure you talk with them. Like, you got to pick up the phone, okay? I know we live in this place where we like love to text and this and that. And don't get me wrong, as a kid and even now, I kind of prefer a text most of the time because stuff can be handled through text. But sometimes... When you gotta do business, you gotta pick up the damn phone, okay? Pick up the phone. All right, so the next thing is if you don't have a computer science background, that's okay. A lot of people that I talked to in the program did not have computer science backgrounds and honestly had never really written code until they started. We have people from all fields, marketing, um, some people already work in data science, but maybe they're like data engineers, stuff like that. Um, people, all, people who have PhDs, you literally go across the spectrum um, in this program. So it doesn't matter. There's people from different countries. I was in class with 50 year olds. I was in class with people that had just graduated undergrad. I was in class with people who, you know, worked at Microsoft. I was in class with people who, you know, maybe weren't even employed and just trying to get a leg up in general. So like, it's across the board you know what i'm saying it, there's there's no limits here you just need to apply and meet the requirements um the next thing is that if you hate group work this program is not going to be for you in literally every single class you will have minimum one group project but it'll probably be two and also you will have to talk in class like participating is part of your grade in class and they really do check that and then the other thing is our classes are really small at Berkeley. Most of them are capped at 15. I think one I'm taking this semester is 17 maybe, but it's really small. So you really get to know the people in your class. You really get to talk to them and you really get to know them. So it's great, but if you are the type of person who wants to keep to yourself and not have to talk and you want to just show up to class, have your ca a ca camera on is another requirement. We have to have our cameras on in most classes. So yeah. 
Um, and if you are looking for something that is truly async, like you do the work on your own time, this program is not for you. You have to go to class. I don't know what that was. You have to go to class. That's number one. They Attendance is part of your grade. Most of the time it's 10%. And then like I said, you have to participate. And then there's work that you have to do before class for almost every class, right? Your homework has to be done before class. So, I mean, while you can choose when you do the homework, the fact that you have, you know, that due date before you go to class, which you have to be at class, um, I think that takes a lot of the async out of it, honestly. Um, you still have a very, like, specific schedule that you have to follow, is basically what I'm saying. And I know every school has due dates or whatever, but y'all know what I mean. Like, to me, a truly asynchronous program, like... I can watch the lecture whenever I want to. I don't have to be there in real life. I submit my assignments and I'm done. This is not like that. This is this is very a uh, highly, you know, participation type of thing. Um, okay, so the next thing is, I guess this is more of a Berkeley FAQ than like specific to application, but I got a lot of stuff from all around. Okay, so the next thing is, in your essays, you should be authentic. Um, and especially when it comes to personal statement, the way I wrote mine was I just looked up what is a personal statement, right? And I started reading examples and taking tips from people and whatever. Um, and I made sure in my personal statement to focus on why I wanted to go to grad school and why I specifically wanted to go to Berkeley. And I took the time to show that I knew some information about Berkeley, right? So like, uh, Berkeley is a big name in computer science, okay? A lot of people know that, but like, do you know who's graduated from there? Do you know what type of, uh, how many patents they have? Do you know who's, who graduated from there and what technology they've created? And you know, the differences that the Berkeley labs have made, like that kind of stuff. Like you really want to show that not only do you care about the degree, you care about where you're getting it from. Um, and you want to show them how you're going to use it. I think that is one of the essay questions that they haven't changed them is like, what do you plan to do in the future? What do you plan to do with your degree? You need to like truly articulate that. And my essays in total, I probably spent like a week on them. Um, like I had my draft and I had my bullet points and then I went under my bullet points and wrote out a lot of stuff for each one. And then I put it all together and then I revised that a few times. Like it's not something you want to wait till the last minute to do. Like you really want to make sure you're showing yourself make sure you're showing your passion and you know put your best foot forward so you gotta you gotta put some work in there um when it comes to the letters of recommendation you want to make sure you choose people who you really know and you want to choose people who you know are going to say good things about you right um you don't have to have a professor. I don't have any professors that I'm cool with for my undergrad. And so I didn't ask them. I asked my manager at Microsoft and I asked one of the senior engineers that I had worked closely with for recommendation letters and they were happy to give them to me. And when you ask people for recommendation letters, you probably want to give them at least, at least a month to get them done, okay? Like don't just spring it on them unless they're a BFF or something like that and you know they can do it last minute, but like don't, don't just spring it on them. Give them some time and it's even better if you give them your resume and then also give them some points that you want them to cover that's what i did um and then just some examples of work right because yes they work with you every day but they got their own lives to be concerned with so maybe they're not thinking like oh yeah mary is so good at xyz she helped with this she helped with that right so you can kind of give them an outline for them to base their letter off of um yeah and like i said it does not have you don't have to have academic recommendations i didn't have any and i made it in and then the last thing is that if you feel that you are lacking in one area let's say that you kind of suck at essays you don't have the money or the resources to get somebody to review them for you or help you with them uh but you know your transcripts are really good you know that's where you shine um or like maybe your essays are really good I think mine were pretty good, but your college current transcripts aren't that impressive. Um, like you want to balance it out, right? Of course, I'm sure Berkeley would love a student that's perfect across the board, but you can also help yourself by like boosting in some areas because you know you lack in others. So try to find that balance. Um, Berkeley does not require the GRE, but if you really want to push your uh, application over the top, if you feel like you're kind of weak in a lot of areas, maybe taking that GRE is really good for you. Um, and so that's really it. Like, 
I don't want to give out specific tips because literally everybody's situation is so different and there's nothing specific to say because the application is so, you know, it's going to vary literally by every single person. No one person wrote the same essay, no one person had the same transcripts, and no one person uh, had the same recommendation letters, right? So I think that's it and thank y'all for sticking with me. I'll give you a life update now. If you don't care about it, please just let the video play to the end so I get that watch time, okay? All right, so as y'all know, I finished my first year at Berkeley in May and I've just been living my best life ever since. I took a semester off. Um, the thing about Berkeley is that you have, I think you have 32 months to fi finish your degree. 32, does that sound right? Yeah, 32. And the time that you take off counts towards those months so like I don't know it was weird I had to submit this whole thing about why I'm not coming back for the summer semester when I plan to come back why I'm leaving what I plan to do differently when I come back like, it was just a whole thing and like when I filled out the application I was like I want a break that's why I'm not coming back for the summer semester um but anyways I'm going back in the fall and um you know that's when I'll probably it's when my schedule will be more linear, right? Because right now I do what I want when I want, but when I'm back in school, I won't have that. And so it's kind of easier to set time to film and edit during that time. The other thing is I started training very heavily to make a pro dance team. I was a cheerleader in high school. If y'all don't know, I was a cheerleader when I was in elementary as well. I did a lot of Like I've always been kind of like a, a palm dancey kind of girl. So that's something I wanted to do for a really long time. I feel like I've accomplished a lot of my career. You know, I finished a year at Berkeley, and so I kind of want to start, or no, not kind of, I'm definitely starting to do the stuff that I want to do because while I enjoy writing code and I enjoy doing computer science and that kind of stuff, um, I have literally always wanted to do this, right? I've always wanted to be a YouTuber and I've always, always wanted to be a Dallas Cowboys cheerleader specifically, um, but there's steps, right? You don't just jump from not dancing daily to being a Dallas Cowboys cheerleader. So I'm training for that. If you've been following me on Instagram and TikTok, you will have seen the videos. Um, don't forget to join the Discord. Um, I'm happy to answer questions. I really do not like answering questions in DMs because I know a lot of you think that your questions are so specific to you, but I'm telling you, every time somebody DMs me, it's a question I've gotten like 10 times, which is why I prefer to answer questions out loud. So you can, add, if you're too shy to ask them on YouTube, I think Discord is your best bet. Um, and yeah, so I guess that's just my life update. I just wanted y'all to know that <laughs> I'm not posting. Sometimes when I'm not posting, it's because I'm sad, but I think it's really because I've been happy and having a good time and like not going back to Berkeley for the summer kind of showed me like, damn, you could really just be living your life like you just have fun um make the most of it and of course right it's the first summer that we've been able to do stuff in two years really so yeah um all right i'm gonna stop talking now this is going up with no edits so don't make fun of me and if this fat piece looks weird it's because when you sit down you're you know it just looks different it is what it is i don't even know why i said that i forgot i'm not editing okay bye i'll see y'all later